All right. Here's what we talked about yesterday. Displacement, and we said it is what kind of quantity, what kind of measurement? What's the word? Vector. Vector. And then the word distance uh, is scalar. Now, we said that yesterday. Go back and re review what that means. Which one of these has a direction included? Displacement. Displacement. Symbol for, di for distance is just a D, D for distance. But a symbol for displacement, I think I told you yesterday, is delta X. Because the word displacement, the actual definition for displacement, is the change in position. And the letter X is used for position. Think of an X axis. A point on that axis is the position of something. And delta means the change. So displacement is something's change in position. That's literally what it is. How much has its position changed from the beginning to the end of the story? How far away is it from where it started? Okay, now sometimes it's really simple. If, if this is my x-axis and here's position zero on the x-axis, and here's one, two, three, four, five, and you walk from here to there and you stop, and I say, what distance did you, did you uh, uh, move? Your answer is really simple. You would say what? Five meters. If I say what is your displacement, you would say what? Five meters, but you would also say what? If this is an x-axis, you don't know anything else about it. You can't say it's... Like, don't look at this and say, oh, that's east. You don't know anything about it. It's an x-axis. We don't know what's north and south. So... What can you say if it's an x-axis? What? Sure, yeah, right. it's a positive direction. It's in the positive direction. Because if you had moved from there this way, that would be in the, that would be a negative direction. One, two, three, four, five. If you move from here again this way and you stopped, how far what's your distance now? It's still five meters distance. But what's your displacement? It's negative five meters. Now, if it's an x-axis, you could just do that. You can say the displacement is negative five meters because the negative gives you the direction. If the understanding is this is an x-axis, you move five meters in the negative direction. Over here, your displacement was positive five meters because you move five meters in the positive direction. So... If you're answering a question, you have to see what's the direction based on. Sometimes direction is north, south, east, west. But sometimes it's positive or negative. Okay? Sometimes you don't know anything. They say you, you walked one block and that was, uh, that was 30 meters. And you don't know anything about it. Well, the assumption, if you don't know anything about it, the assumption is the direction you're moving is the positive direction unless you're told otherwise. Negative is walking backwards. Okay. All right. Hope you're seeing the difference. Now, what if, what if you did this? You walked from position A, which is that, to position B, which is that. Your displacement is positive five meters. We've already said all that. But what if then you turn around and you walk back to where you started from? Then I ask you, what is your displacement for the entire trip? What would it be? Zero. Zero. Right. Now, look at that. Your displacement is zero. Because look at what displacement means. What's your change in position? It's, there is no change. You're right back where you started from. Change in position is zero. But if I ask you what distance did you walk, now that's a different question, isn't it? What distance did you walk? Ten meters. <coughs> Are you seeing the difference in the two words? Uh, distance doesn't have a direction, so it doesn't matter that, that five meters were to the right and, and five meters to the left. The, the direction doesn't matter. It's just how many meters did you walk? Well, you walked a total of 10 meters. 
So the distance here would be 10 meters. Okay. So uh, again, you have to remember the difference in these two terms. This one's vector, that one's scalar, and so that can be a very different answer for the same trip. It's two different questions. All right. Now look at the look at the TV. There's a graph paper right there. What I have here, hmm, this is probably not really going to work. Let's say a person. Here's what we're going to say. Um, every one of these lines is one meter. Whether you're going that way or this way, from here to here is one meter. From here to here is one meter. Okay, I'm not going to write that up there, but that's the scale. Now, a person starts here at position A, and they walk from here to there, and then they walk from there to here, and then they walk from here to there, here to there, and here to there, and they stop right here. This is position B, this is C, that's D, that's E, and that where they stopped is position F right there. Mm -hmm. That's a F. Okay. Now, listen to the question carefully. What's the total distance the person walked from A to F? Distance the person walked from A to F. Anybody know? What do you think it is, Kelly? 22 meters. Is that right? I think it's 23. Unless I count wrong. I don't know. It's, it gets kind of easy. Probably count. Here. It's something. Below 20. 24. 22. From A to B is how many? 1, 2, no, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From B to C is how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 12. 7 and 5 is 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2. 22. What you said wasn't it? Yep. What's the displacement of the person from A to F? So that's just, is it 7 or 8? What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's 8 meters. What else would you say, though? You can say positive eight meters in terms of it. Again, if, if, if all you know is this, you can think of this as an X axis because from A to F would be along the X axis. And if it's going from A to F, that is a positive direction. So you can assume? So what? You can assume that? That's you can assume that, yes, uh, if you're not told anything else. You could also just write, if you're not told anything else, you could say it's eight meters to the right. That's okay. That's a direction, isn't it? On the page, it, the person moved to the right. You can just say to the right on the page. Okay. What What would you say if I said what is what distance did the person walk from just A to B? Five, five meters. Five What's the displacement from A to B? Five, five meters. Five, five meters, down. meters what? Downwards. You can write down on the page. You can write in the negative y direction if you want to. It's the same thing. You could write vertically down, I suppose. I, I, but down on the page is okay. You can refer to the page if you don't have any other information. What, what some people want to do is say, oh, you went south because it's down, like on a map. Well, nobody said this is a map. We don't know if that's south, so don't put that. Okay. Now... Uh, what would you do if I asked you to find the displacement from A to C? It's the change in position, so it's not 5 plus 6. Is that 6 or 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's not 5 plus 7. I mean, that's not the answer to the question, is it? Well, let's back up. What if I say, what distance did you travel from A to C? That's 12 meters. That's 5 plus 7. But if I ask the displacement, that's a straight line from A to C, which is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, isn't it? So you could find it that way. Everybody know how to deal with right triangles? Just the Pythagorean theorem. 
5 squared plus 7 squared is equal to the seven answer squared. Square root 74. Yeah, so whatever that is, <laughs> it would be the answer. Yeah. So, again, I'm just making sure you understand the meaning of the word displacement. Yes? Can we get a calculator on the AP exam? Yes. You do. Now, uh, let's go back and do one that's a little easier math. Which means I'm going to get rid of all this. It might be a lot of this. True. All right. Person goes from A to B to C. Now we can deal with it we, without a calculator. What um, five? A to C, what's the total distance traveled? Seven meters. Seven meters. Now, what's the displacement from A to C? Five, five meters. Five meters. And I guess this the, is a three, four, five triangle. So, in the magic of iPads, I can do that in red. In whoa. Cool? You all didn't think I knew how to do stuff like this, did you? <laughs> yeah, I could do stuff. So, how would you write that in terms of direction? <laughs> So okay, so the red line is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Now, if I asked you for the displacement, you haven't answered it completely yet. You said it's five meters, but what else do you need? Direction. The direction. Oh my goodness, what's the direction from A to C? Uh, down into the right. Down into the right. However, in physics... <laughs> We've got to get a little more quantitative. How can you give the direction quantitatively with a number? Down to the right by one meter. You figure out what angle it is. So take, take, uh, here. In green, I have a little coordinate system. There. And from A. And so... If I want to give the direction, I could give this angle or that angle. I would probably try to find this angle. That'd be nice, because then I could say it's that many degrees below the positive x-axis. Does that make sense? If I tried to find that angle right there, it's the same as this angle, isn't it? If all of you had at least a little bit of work with right triangles. It's been a while, though, guys. Okay, so... Now, what I'm dealing with is finding what is this angle we will call theta. So, because it's the same as the one up here, and I can say it's that many degrees below the positive x-axis. Who can tell me how to find that angle? Do you remember Sokotoa? Yeah, vaguely. You've all had this. I'm not teaching you anything new. Am I? Am I? Have you had Sokotoa? Of course you've had Sokotoa. All right, so I want to know this angle, and what I know is, I know all three lines, though. I know that's three, and I know that's four, and I even know this is five. What am I going to do? I, I've got, I could use anything. I could, could use sine, cosine, or tangent. Which one do you like best? Oh, let's use sine. The sine you learned in Sokotoa of an angle, theta, <coughs> is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, S-O-H, and so, so Katoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of, of this angle I'm looking at is equal to the, the sine is equal to the opposite, which is three, divided by the hypotenuse, which is five. All right. So what I have in my calculator is the sine of theta is equal to 3 divided by 5. And maybe you know what that is because you've worked with 3, 4, 5 triangles. Anybody happen to know what the angle is in a 3, 4, 5 triangle? Is it, is it 30, 30, it's 37. What? It rounds off to 37 degrees. Um, that, now that's the one down here. 
This one's smaller, that one's a bigger one. Is that really true? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So this is 37 degrees, of course, that's 90 degrees, and this would then be 53, uh, whatever it is. I've got to add up to 90. Okay, so then what you could say is the displacement, this is the answer to the question, is 5 meters, that's the red line, it's 5 meters long, and it is 37 degrees below the positive x-axis. Now, if you were given, if this problem said, hey, up here, really, this is north, and that's south, and this is east, and that's west. If they told you that, then you could say it's 37 degrees um, south of east. Ooh, did you get that? See, this is, this is your reference point here. If you go this way, that's east. If you go down, it's south. Well, that's the degrees, that's the angle that is below east. So that's south of east. You could say it that way. 37 degrees south of east. See, that's better than just saying, oh, the person went southeast. Well, southeast could be, could be a whole lot of different directions. It's anywhere between those two lines. So 37 degrees south of east tells you, tells you more specifically the direction. Okay. Any questions about displacement? We are going to eventually, not even eventually, but soon, and throughout chapter 2 and also chapter 3 and 4 and for a long time, be working a lot with right triangles. They just come into play a lot. If you are totally lost with, with right triangles, maybe you should drop the class or get some help. So, Because I'm not really going to be your trigonometry teacher. And, and you don't have to have had trigonometry for this class, but you do need to know sine, cosine, tangent. You need how to do, deal with sine, cosine, tangent with a right triangle like we just did. Uh, in your calculator, you need to know how to, to solve this problem for theta. Sine theta is 3 over 5. And so you need to take 0.6 and, and figure out what theta would be. And it is 37 degrees, so if you want to practice, see if you come out with 37 degrees, see if you know how to do it, that's fine. You are going to have to do that. Um, this, in this case, it would be probably second function sign in your calculator. Am I telling you the right thing? Yeah. And, and then 0.6 or three fifths. Um, and that will flip it and give you theta. Um, okay. But if you're doing it and it comes out and, and also, oh, also make sure you're in degree mode. Um, sometimes math teachers ask you to get in radian mode for various things. Radian mode We'll give you radians, not degrees, but we want in physics, unless you're told otherwise, we want the answer in degrees. So, so make sure you, when you hit the mode button on your calculator, it's in degree mode. The only time that matters is if you're doing angles. You know, if you're just multiplying numbers, it doesn't matter what mode you're in. But if you're going to deal with angles, we want you in degree mode. And then, if you solve this, it should come out to be about 37. Is that working? For those of you trying? Okay. <coughs> All right. Also, you will become, and right now, maybe you haven't done a whole lot of problems with Sokotoa. You, you've had it, and you've been introduced to it, but you're going to get to where it'll just be, you'll, you'll do it so much, eventually you'll get to the point where it's easy. You, so don't feel bad if right now it's not easy. As long as you understand it and you can figure it out, we'll get to the point where it's easy. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have a question about that? What time do we get out of this class? You two? I, I have a schedule with them, but I can pull it out. So. Um, third period ends at 11.50. We have five minutes. All right, let's talk a little bit about speed and velocity. The other two things we brought up yesterday and that you read about last night. 
All right. Um, now, we said that velocity is vector quantity, whereas speed, and I'm sorry, speed doesn't really have a symbol. I've seen some textbooks that will use a V with a subscript S for speed. And it's just a V, it's velocity, but if it has that, it's speed, but that's not universal. So I just write the word speed. This is scalar, that's vector. We talked about that yesterday. Does it have to have a curve in it, or can it be pointed? Uh, it can be pointed. Eventually, I bet it's okay to be, to be pointed. Uh, this also looks like the Greek letter nu is why, and we might end up using nu for something later on, but... So that's why it's curved. So, yeah, okay. just to make the distinction, but we're not going to use new for a long time. If you, and if you write a V like that, it's, nobody's going to count that wrong on a test. That would be fine. Okay. First of all, definition for either one of these in terms of how you calculate it. It's pretty simple. What is it? How do I calculate velocity? It's distance divided by time. Your car goes in miles per hour. See, miles is distance, hour is time. It, but the SI units, which is what we use in physics, throughout, the, the, we use SI units, we stick with those. What's the SI unit for distance? Yeah, Meters. Second. What's the SI unit for time? Second. second. So we will use that for our unit for speed, meters per second. Just like for displacement or distance, we use meters. We're going to stick with the SI unit. I'm not going to give you a problem where somebody moves so many feet or yards. It'll always be meters. So the distance will be in meters per second. Now, velocity has a slightly different definition. It's not distance per time. It's what? Displacement divided by time. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, look back up at that triangle up there. Person goes from A to C. And let's say it takes, from A to C, it takes 10 seconds to do that. 10 seconds. They walk from A to C. I have two questions. One is, what is the average speed We'll put average there because maybe they walk in walking, maybe they sped up, slowed down at different points, but they were at point C in 10 seconds. All right, so what's the average speed of the person? How, how would I get that? I would divide what? Distance over time. It's the distance, which is what? Five. No, the distance seven. from A to C, it, yeah, it's three and four, seven meters divided by the time 10 seconds. So that would be what? 0.7 meters per second, right? That's not the person's average velocity, though. That is the average speed, total distance traveled, divided by the total time it took. If I ask you for velocity, that's the displacement divided by time. What was the displacement? Five meters. See, that's the red line. Divided by time. And so what's that? 0.5 meters per second. It's a different, if it's a different number entirely. Of course, here also, then you still have to give a direction 37 degrees below the positive x axis. So if I asked you for velocity and I told you 10 seconds, this is the answer 0.5 meters per second, 37 degrees below the x axis. That's the average velocity. You might sometimes you see a bar there for average velocity. The average speed, though, is doesn't have a direction, but it's 0.7 meters per second. So these are two entirely different questions. You've got to get that in your head. Speed and velocity are two different things. Uh, they can be the same thing if you're moving in a straight line. So but if you're not moving in a straight line, like here, where we move one direction to another, they're not the same thing. All right. I think the bell's going to ring in a minute or so, so we'll stop here. Oh.
your homework. I'm turning this off. Bye, everybody. See you Monday.